So the most likely scenario is that by the time we approach the December time frame, we're going to be in a weak La Nina, and that'll play a big role in terms of the type of conditions you should expect throughout the United States. So I took all the weak La Nina winters, um, that um, the winters that range from December and February, and compared it to the long-term average, and, take a, um, and took a look at all the temperature anomalies. And as you can see, this is a temperature anomaly climate division plot, and we clearly see that it's much typically much colder than average throughout the northern midwest and the pacific northwest during weak la ninas and we even see the colder than average conditions to a lesser extent uh, move further southward as well into the um, southwestern united states while up along the east coast we see temperatures mainly closer to average during weak la ninas there is a small anomaly when it comes to the temperatures in the southeast during weak La Niñas, but isn't really strong enough for me to confidently say that you're going to experience a much warmer winter in um, right around the southeast. So I'll keep you guys updated when it comes to the other factors that could play a role in terms of the temperature. You should expect this winter in the southeast, but for the most part, you should expect colder than normal conditions um, throughout the northern Midwest as well as Pacific Northwest and even even a little bit further southward into the southwestern United States, while temperatures could um, fall maybe around average or slightly above average right up along the east coast based on what we typically see during weak La Niñas. But we need to take a look at other factors before we can confidently say this for certain. Next thing I want to show you is the precipitation anomalies during weak La Niñas and as you can clearly see the anomalies are definitely aren't as strong as what we see with the temperature climate division um, composite where we see that the anomalies are very weak for the most part throughout the United States with the exception of the Pacific Coast where we typically see much drier than normal conditions during weak La Nina as this extends as far south as the San Diego area all the way up to the United States Canadian border so right up along the Pacific North on um, the Pacific Coast in general you should expect a drier winter this um, season and then it's also typically drier than normal right over Florida during weak La Nina so you definitely want to be aware of that right up along the southern tip of Florida especially where you typically see less um, moisture than usual during weak La Ninas as it's most likely due to the fact that the subtropical jet is much weaker during La Nina so that brings a lot less storm systems towards the Florida coast so you should expect more sunny days and most likely a warmer winter for the southeast and more sickly Florida thanks to the drier than normal conditions um, since drier soil would have a higher possibility of leading to warmer temperatures since drier soil heats up much quicker than moist soil. And then for the mid-Atlantic, we do have a small anomaly where it is slightly drier than normal during weak La Ninas. But again, it isn't strong enough for me to confidently say that it's going to be most likely drier than normal um, in the mid-Atlantic as I need to show um, I need to take a look at all the factors to really say it with more confidence it will be drier than normal right over the, the mid-Atlantic. And another key thing you might notice is taking a look at the Great Lakes region where typically during La Niñas right over the Ohio River Valley and Great Lakes region we see much more moist than usual conditions but it isn't really the case when it comes to a weaker La Niña where we see that the precipitation anomalies aren't as strong right over the Great Lakes and extending into the Ohio River Valley where we see the precipitation is a little bit closer to average so Although you might initially think that it's going to be more wet than usual in the Ohio River Valley thanks to a La Nina, it might that not might not necessarily be the case because um, due to the fact that a weak La Nina is fairly different from your typical La Nina that you experience. So we very well could see most likely average um, precipitation when it comes to um, this winter for the Ohio River Valley as well as the Great Lakes region. So although there are differences when it comes to a weak La Nina compared to a typical La Nina we see during the winter time, for the most part they share um, a lot of similarities. We see 
colder than normal conditions right over the northern Midwest as well as Pacific Northwest. So in those areas, that's where I expect the temperatures to be overall much colder than average and you're more likely going to experience much more snow than average compared to the rest um, relative to the rest of the United States. While for the southern United States, it's simply warmer and drier than normal during La Niña's and even during weak La Niña's as well. So there isn't much of a difference there. The only two areas where you're likely going to experience differences when it comes to the type of conditions you'll um, typically see during La Nina is in the Ohio River Valley as well as the Pacific Northwest where both areas during a regular La Nina are a little bit more moist than usual but that isn't necessarily the case when it comes to a weaker La Nina where the tep the, where the precipitation anomalies are a little bit closer to average right over the Ohio River Valley and then the Pacific Northwest it's drier than normal during weak La Ninas but again we're still months out there's still that possibility that maybe this La Nina is stronger than we anticipate and this map may be the more correct one when it comes to the type conditions you should experience in the United States this winter but there's also that possibility that the La Nina is even weaker than we'd expect and we might not even be in a weak La Nina we might only be in a neutral phase which again plays a much bigger difference when it comes to the type of conditions you're going to see this winter so I'll keep us updated as the forecast continue um, continues to change and we see new trends when it comes to the sea surf temperatures over the Nino 3.4 region because that'll play a big role in terms of the type of conditions you're going to see so I'll certainly keep you guys updated when it comes to that but generally speaking in areas with the exception of the Ohio Valley and the Pacific Northwest where it should be a little bit drier than what you see in those regions the this map is a very good indication of what you should expect this winter so I know many of you guys are wondering if you're going to experience a lot of snow this winter and typically during La Nina as we see much more snow than usual pretty much throughout the entirety of the northern United States most most specifically very um the areas that are closest to the United States Canadian border and there's a more pronounced anomaly right up along the Pacific Northwest especially in the higher elevations. so for anyone who's into skiing this should be a great winter for you guys in the Pacific Northwest thanks to a La Nina that's gonna take place and bring much colder than usual conditions which should allow for much more snow in these areas and same goes for the um, northern Midwest you should expect more snow than usual and even the interior Northeast sees more snow than usual now for the areas that receive less snowfall than usual what's very interesting is that the mid-atlantic states typically receive less snowfall than usual during la nina's um, more simply cities such as philadelphia baltimore washington dc these areas see less snowfall than usual and the anomaly is decent so i'll say more it's more likely than not the mid-atlantic might experience closer to average snowfall if not but i'm um, slightly below average snowfall thanks to what we typically see during la nina but again it's very variable because we see um we've seen la nina's produce plenty of snowfall as it's going to be one of those winters i think for the northeast more simply the interstate 95 corridor the northeast where there's going to be a lot of rain snow line events where um any small difference where um in which um in where the rain snow line develops could make a big difference in terms of amount of snowfall you experience in a lot of the big cities so i'll certainly keep you guys updated um when it comes to um how um a lot of these snowstorms will build out by the time they approach the northeast because i think it's going to be one of those winters where a lot of the snowstorms will be very close in terms of impacting the big cities in the northeast but more most likely the snowfall should be close to average if not slightly below average right up along um the northeast cities and the other area where you see less snowfall than usual is right around the southwestern united states this includes the panhandle of texas extending into kansas western oklahoma and extending into the southern portions of colorado and the entire almost the entirety of new mexico and arizona where you see less snowfall than usual and this is most likely due to the fact uh, um that um during la ninas we see a much weaker subtropical jet so there isn't a lot of moisture to supply um a lot of these areas with snowfall so you see um you're more likely to ex experience less snowfall than usual this winter in those areas
So when it comes to the temperature anomalies the NMME model is forecasting, which is a climatology model that combines a lot of the most reliable computer models into one model. So this gives nearly the most accurate representation of what to expect when it comes to long-term conditions throughout the United States and many other areas of the world as well. We see that during the months between Jan um, December, January, and February, it's expected to be much warmer than usual over the Southeast and the South in general which isn't um, anything that's unusual um, by the time we approach a uh, weak La Nina winter as we do typically see warmer conditions right over the southeast during La Nina years and we see colder conditions um, than average conditions right over the northern midwest as well as the pacific northwest so we definitely want to keep that in mind by the time we approach um, this winter for a lot of these areas as I'd expect that um, this winter will look very similar to what um, the NMME model is forecasting, especially since it's very similar to what we see during weak La Niñas anyways. So, um, and for the Northeast, we do see that temperatures will fall a little bit closer to average or potentially slightly above average. So that makes me believe that it's going to be a little bit less conducive for snowfall right up along the Northeast coast. Um, but you still could at least see um, some snowfall events um, since the temperature won't be that much above average, um, at least compared to what you're going to experience in the southeast so definitely keep that in mind by the time we approach the winter time frame of course take it with a grain of salt a lot could change between now and the winter of 2025 um but um for mo more likely than not this sort of scenario should take shape here um by the time we approach this winter Another good thing to, to take a look at is the drought monitor throughout the United States and we clearly see it's a, um, slightly more drier than usual right over the Pacific Northwest and also the Mid-Atlantic and we see a stronger drought right over Western Texas extending into New Mexico as well. However, in a lot of these areas such as the Pacific Northwest and the Mid-Atlantic, the drought conditions aren't necessarily so severe to a point where I'd say this will play a big role in terms of what to expect in the winter as I could easily see these droughts going away by the time we approach December um, unless we start to see the drought get into the reds and the darker reds which represents a more severe drought um, that's um, lasted over a prolonged period then I wouldn't say that this will play a big role in terms of what to expect during the winter time but if we were to um, enter a severe drought in one of these areas and we're more likely going to of course experience warmer and drier than normal conditions over that said area thanks to the fact that it's very difficult for a drought to go away and thanks to the dry soil that's associated with a drought we typically see the temperatures warm up a lot more quickly since dry soil heats up a lot more quickly than moist soil as well as the fact that during droughts you see more sunny than usual conditions which allows more of the short wave radiation from the sun to warm up the surface um, over the drought stricken area so um, however, there isn't really a strong enough drought for me to say this will play a big role in some of these areas. Maybe right around New Mexico and Western Texas, um, it could be um, drier. Um, it, um, um, we likely will experience drier than normal conditions um, thanks to the fact that not only is there a drought over that area, but that's typically what happens anyways during La Nina years. So I do expect that to be the only area where I expect the drought conditions to unfortunately continue by the time we approach the winter time frame and it should be a uh, much more sunny and warmer than usual as a result of that in that area but other than that the drought conditions aren't necessarily strong enough for me to say that it, the drought conditions will stay by the time we approach the winter time frame so here's my overall winter forecast for the winter of 2024 through 2025. So let's start with the Northeast. So the Interstate 95 corridor cities, I expect it to be one of those winters where there's going to be some storms where it's going to be entirely a rain event, but other storms where it could be entirely a snow event as there's going to be a lot of rain and snow mixing um, with a lot of these storm systems. You're definitely going to need to pay close attention to where that rain snow line builds right up along the Interstate 95 corridor because I don't 
don't necessarily ex expect temperatures to be cold enough to really confidently say you're going to experience a lot of snowstorms this winter, but I don't necessarily think it's going to be warm enough either to the point where it's gonna, just going to be entirely a rain event type winter for a lot of the northeast cities. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a mix of both with average temperatures and precipitation. That's a little bit more than usual, um, but it could vary um, between rain and snow depending on the type of storm and the type of position it takes. So I expect maybe an average winter when it comes to snowfall right up along the Interstate 95 corridor cities. Um, for the interior northeast, it should be colder and snowier than usual thanks to the fact that I do expect it to be just north enough to the point where it will avoid the warmer Atlantic water temperatures. Um, so you should still experience many snowstorms in the interior northeast thanks to that. Um, I do expect it still to be more moist than usual right over the Ohio Valley thanks to the fact that we're going to be in La Nina. This, um, even though during weaker La Nina, the anomalies isn't, um, isn't as strong, but I do believe that um, there's still that possibility more likely than not it will be more moist than usual right over the Ohio Valley and again the storm systems could vary between snow events and rain events depending on how much cold air is in that region in that specific time period which is um, which definitely will be very variable by the time we approach the winter time frame. I expect it to be again colder and snowier for the um, northern Midwest as well. This includes cities like um, uh, Milwaukee, um, Minneapolis, um, even Detroit and Chicago will get involved in this as is simply what we see during um, La Nina's and then I expect the worst of the winter when it comes to cold and snow to be in the Pacific Northwest which is what we typically see during weaker La Nina's um, so definitely prepare for that especially in the higher elevations of the Pacific Northwest and pretty much for the entirety of the southern United States. More simply, the southeast, I expect it to be warmer and drier than usual um, in this area thanks to a weaker subtropical jet. Um, so definitely be prepared for that. And then drier than usual conditions, not only due to drought that's over the southwest United States at this time, but the fact that a uh, weak La Nina typically does bring drier than normal conditions over that area. So then we expect that in cities like Phoenix, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Las Vegas as well. So this is my entirety of the winter forecast. If you want even more in detail forecasts regarding um, what type of co um, conditions you should expect in your specific area, just make sure to comment down below and I'll do my best to try to answer on um, what type of conditions you should expect this winter. So make sure to comment down your area um, down below if you're interested. But that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.